What's going on, family and friends? This is your man Mel with Mel's Block. Listen, I've been having such an exciting time going through the book of Psalms with you guys, uh, Psalms 23, um, that I feel like the Holy Spirit has told me to continue to kind of bounce around in the book of Psalms and do a couple videos on them because if I'm being honest with you, I've been wanting to go through Psalms because there's so much in there that God has given us to bless us with and I think we need to spend more time really breaking it down and trying to understand what the Spirit has 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 given us in this book to be blessed by and to see how we can make it applicable in our lives and so as we continue to go through the book of Psalms we're about to jump into Psalms 119 it's probably the longest Psalms but for me I found it to be such a blessing um, as I've been reading through it and learning different things that I can't wait to share some of the things that God has revealed to me in this book. But before we jump into it, man, I just want to say if this is your first time on Mel's Block, do me a favor, look around, check out some of the videos. If there's something on there you like, watch it. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We got new videos popping up all the time. But let's jump into it. Um, here's the question that I want to ask as we go into Psalms 119. And we're going to break this down into sections. Because as you read the book of Psalms, nah, the book of Psalms chapter 119, it's almost broken down in, into the Hebrew alphabet. So there's different sections. Right now we're in section A. So here's the question that I want to read. Here's the question I want to ask you guys as as we go into this is where do you find happiness at you know so so many people we often find happiness in other people we find happiness in places we find happiness in things that we do whether it be sports or you know um, our marriage or our job some people find happiness in money we find happiness in all different types of places but let me tell you something when I read the scriptures Psalms 119, what I find is that the scriptures tell us happiness comes in a very different place. As we read through Psalms 119, one thing that we're going to see, and I want to just break it down to you real quick before we jump into it, is the phrase, how blessed, how blessed. That, that phrase, what it means is how happy, right? So when we're reading this first eight verses, what I want you to realize is scripture tells us that happiness comes from a very, very different place than what the world tells us. So let's just jump right into it. And we'll start with verse 1. And it says, How blessed are those whose way is blameless. How blessed are those whose way is blameless. And, 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 and how do we know their way is blameless? Because he says, It's them who walk in the law of the Lord and so again how blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the Lord so we find happiness when we keep our way blameless when we keep our way pure without blemish this goes against all the grains I've ever been taught coming up I was taught you know on the streets that you find happiness in women you find happiness in having a lot of money. You find happiness in sex. You find happiness in all the different, des uh, fulfilling all the different desires of the flesh. But the scripture says that we find happiness when we walk blamelessly, when we walk according to the law of the Lord. This is when we walk with integrity. And again, how does a person do that? Because that's that's the missing link. Oftentimes you want to tell me how 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 something's supposed to be, but people don't always tell us how we're supposed to accomplish that. Well, the psalmist here did a very good job telling us how we're supposed to accomplish walking blamelessly. He says, you walk in the law of the Lord. Now, this is just not the Ten Commandments. But this is the entire scriptural revelation. God is not just giving us his word for us to read like a novel. He's not just giving us his word to sit and get all emotional about it. He's giving us his word and then he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. Because he knows that when we truly love him and obey him, 
that we'll walk blamelessly. And when we do that, we'll find happiness. The one thing that, if we're being honest, most people are searching for in the world today is happiness. So as we continue on in the text, verse 2 says, How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. So let's go ahead and break that down. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. And if we look at verse 3, he says, They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. They do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. To me, this screams obedience, obedience, obedience. Our true happiness comes from being obedient to the king in all areas of our life. See, we think that true happiness comes from breaking the rules, bending the rules, doing the things that make us feel excited on the inside. But that goes against all the kingdom of God teaches us. The kingdom teaches us that when we're obedient to the word of God, when we walk blamelessly before him and we follow the path that he's put out in front of us, then we find true happiness, right? Our true happiness comes from being obedient to God in all areas of our lives. Now check this, not being lukewarm, not lukewarm obedience, but a heart full of love for Jesus Christ. This is the reason why God has ordained his word to us. He doesn't want us to be lukewarm, but he wants us to love him with every fiber of our being. This is this is something that's difficult, right? You know, walking walking this life out is not easy. Being a Christian is not easy. Anyone that tells you that being a Christian is easy. But one thing I will tell you is that when you have a heart that truly does love the Lord Jesus Christ with everything that you are, even though it's not easy being a Christian, it's worthwhile every single day. Paul said to endure, to persist, to fight, to keep going, to suffer hardship as a as a soldier of Jesus Christ. And so these are things that we have to continue to persist in because we love the Lord with all of our heart. This again is the reason why God ordained his word. And we see in verse 4 he says exactly that. You have ordained your precepts that we should Keep them diligently. See, what we need to understand, brothers and sisters, is that God has commanded that we keep his word because he knows that our true happiness can only come from him. God knows this. He's the creator. He's the one that put all this together. So he understands how we are to be happy, how we're to be joyful. And it comes from being obedient to his word and so he ordained his precepts that we should keep them commandments are not options that you know we can pick and choose like clothing we are to be diligent and we are to obey the king and so that's a large problem that we see in, in, in Christianity today is that a lot of people want to pick and choose the parts that they want to walk out or the parts they want to throw away or this sounds good for today but see it says God ordained his precepts that we should walk in them because he understands that when we're completely obedient to his word that happiness is not far off and so we need to watch and examine ourselves to make sure that we are being obedient to the things that God has said in his word not picking and choosing not being lukewarm but striving every day to walk in a manner worthy of the high calling that we have in Christ Jesus. And again, this is not something that's going to be easy, brothers and sisters. But nothing in life worthwhile is easy. This is something that you're going to have to fight for every day. When the Israelites went into the promised land, God could have wiped out all the nations. Just like that. But he made them go in there and fight for every square inch. And he's doing the same thing for us spiritually. If you want to possess the land, if you want to possess the kingdom that God has prepared for us, then you have to be willing to fight for it by being obedient to his word. But he says that when we're obedient to his word and we're blameless, and we listen to his commandments, that one effect of that is we will find true happiness. 
So let's 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 continue to go on. He says in verse five. Oh, that my ways may be established. This is the psalmist writing to keep your statues. And so he changes. He changes up here. The writer now turns to a personal prayer asking God that the word may be established in his own life because he understands that the effects of obedience are happiness. The results of being obedient to the word is happiness. And so he asks God to establish the word within his life. But then he goes further, he says, Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statues. Right? He understands only God can do this. In his prayer, he understands that only God can help him walk according to his word. So he has a desire for it. You have a desire for it. I have a desire for it. But we also understand that God is the one that strengthens that desire and enables us to fulfill that desire through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Word teaches us. We need to be praying every day for God to establish His Word in us so that we can be obedient to it. But then we also need to be praying and asking God at the same time to enable that word to be established in us because only he can do it. And as we continue to read the text, he says, Then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. See, let me just let me just say this. Through all this we see in verses six through eight, the writer comes to an understanding that we all must come to. When we are established in the word of God, we too can say, Then I shall not be ashamed. This position can only come when we look upon the commandments of God in a place of obedience. When we walk in the word of God, we like him can say, I will not be ashamed. But that doesn't mean perfection, right? We fall short, we make mistakes. Come on, keep it real. But the word has provision even for that. In the book of 1 John, it says that we have Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is our advocate. And when we fall short, he's there to forgive us. So the word has provision for everything that we need. And that's another reason for you to be happy today. Then I shall not be ashamed. See, this position can only come when we look upon the commands of God in a place of obedience. This knowledge was so much for the psalmist, he shouted out, I shall keep your statues. And we need to say the same thing. Lord God, today I will keep your statues. I will walk in obedience because when I do that, I find my true source of happiness. And that's an obedience to you from a heart full of love, not fear. Also, again, understanding that he needed God every step of the way. Well, we need God every step of the way. So, listen, trust in God. Be obedient to his word. Stop looking for happiness in external sources, but find your happiness with the word of God, with the statutes and commandments of God. Because when you walk blamelessly before the Lord, then, and only then, are you truly happy. This is your man Mel with Mel's Block. Man, I'll catch y'all next time. Be blessed.